Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at using particles in LibGDX. Uh, particles are used for all kinds of things, um, smoke effects, um, fire, flocking, uh, so like a flock of birds. Uh, more or less, what it is is a whole bunch of graphics or graphical objects that are represented by a single controller. Uh, normally, they've got some kind of uh, physical control behind them, like... Uh, propulsion or cloud scattering or whatever but instead of controlling each one individually there's one system that sort of overarching takes control of everything. Um, LibGDX particle systems aren't actually difficult to use uh, but it is complicated enough so I went ahead and created this video to show you the process. Starts from the very very beginning let's go ahead and delete that guy. Start off load up the setup utility. If you haven't already download this from uh, the LibGDX website, Bad Logic Games, uh, and create your project. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you call it. I'll call mine very inventively Particles. Game from, I can't type because I'm recording this. All right. Like so. Don't want iOS. Box. The key thing is tools. The sprite editor is in, uh, sorry, the particle editor is in the uh, tools dependency. You need that downloaded. So in the extension section here, click the tools. Uh, I'm going to be demonstrating this in uh, Idea and Eclipse. So I'll go ahead and create those two and generate your project. Uh, this is all dependent on my current internet speed and my computer's desire to do this, but it should take about 9 or 10 seconds. And done. 8.6. All right, let's go ahead, create a project here. Let's load it up in IDEA. Uh, all right, I don't want that message again, as I've said that every single time. First things first, let's make sure our project actually works. As always, come in here, select Android, press F4 to set the SDK to Android this every single time. All right, so let's go into our desktop. So run, create configuration, do a new one. It's an application. Key things are set the module to desktop, set the working directory. Uh, if you have an Android um, project, then it's the assets folder is inside of Android. Otherwise, it's inside of core. Uh, we do have an Android project in this case, so we'll go ahead and set it into Android slash assets. And then set our main class to desktop launcher. Let's give it a name called desktop, apply, and run. And we should see the default application, the logo on a red background. Let's go ahead and kill that out. All right, so that is a basic project created. You no doubt already know how to do that. Now what we need to do is load the particle editor. It is in the tools jar that should be included. So go into your external libraries, uh, GDX tools, navigate down into the namespace, into tools, select particle editor, scroll down and find particle editor, right click that guy and select run. Now what you need to do is set its class path to desktop. The default name is fine and Let's run it. There is the particle editor. Um, yeah, I, this is where you come in. You put your systems together. You know, control your particle counts, your flow rates, your life cycle, uh, what kind of particle to launch, all kinds of neat things to do in here. And uh, frankly, we're not covering any of them today. So I just want to come in here and create a very basic particle system. And frankly, I am okay with this one. Uh, it's a simple flame effect. It's already set up for us, so go ahead and save it. We want it to go in our Android's assets folder, like so. And I'm going to call it particle.party. There is no file extension required. There is no file extension registered. Pick whatever you want, or none at all. I like party. It seems to make sense. So go ahead and save that. So now let's go back to our project. And here, I'll shut that down. And look in our assets folder, and there's our new particle system. Let's take a look at what code it generated. Simple text file, um, as you can see, it's named categories values. Very, very straightforward and simple system. 
Now let's use it. That means going into our code. So let's go into our core project, into our source, our main class. First things first, let's get rid of all the stuff we don't need. Don't need our... Don't need that logo. Let's get rid of it. We will clear to black instead of bright, bright red. And now let's create our code. The first and primary guy you're going to use is the particle effect class. Uh, there's 2D and 3D. In this case, we're working with 2D. Go ahead and create one. Let's call it PE. It's a bad variable name day. Now in create, let's go ahead and create our particle effect. First off, go ahead and um, make one. Eh, stop switching between IDs. All right, so now that we've made it, we've got to load it. Expects a pair of file handles. Uh, we'll go ahead with uh, gdx.files.internal and then load our particles.party file. And on top of that, it also wants a directory that all of our particle images are going to reside if we use them or not. So we'll just give it the default internal directory. Next up, we're going to position the emitter. The emitter is the, uh, think of it as the source of the particles. To use a real world analogy, uh, your tap is, say, turn on the tap, water comes out of it, the water is composed of particles, the tap itself is the emitter. Uh, in libgdx, the emitters are attached to the particle effects. Uh, I believe the default is there's eight emitters attached for some reason. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and use the first one. So just go PE, get the emitters, get the first emitter, set its position, and we'll just go as center of the screen. Like so. All right, and finally, let's go ahead and start our emitter. Sorry, start our effect. Simply call start. Okay. So, created an effect, loaded it up, positioned its emitter, and started it. Next up, all the magic happens in render. Particle system is a lot like a physics system. Uh, the effect needs to be updated, either on a per frame or per whatever update ratio you're using. Here I'm just going to do it per frame. So, P, update, and then send in the delta. So, so that updates the particle system, causes the, the calculations behind the scenes to happen, so the particle system does its particle thing. Now we finally need to draw it, so let's go PE draw, and just draw it to our sprite batch, like so. We'll quickly run that, make sure we go back to our desktop project instead of the particle editor. Ooh, I screwed up. Alright, particles not found, I probably typoed. Let's see... Android assets, particle, plural, particles. Actually, I like the name plural better. So let's go with, uh, rename that. All right, now let's, there you go. So there is your particle system and it's gone. Now let's get rid of that it's gone factor. What you have to want to do is check to see if particle system is still actually doing anything. And it's a matter of is oops, I'm outside of the function. No, now I'm not. Alright. Is complete. Let's make that an actual if. So if it is complete, simply reset it. And maybe I should close my function again. And now you run that. There's our particle effect updating. It will play to the end and start again, and play to the end and start again, over and over and over and over again. So there is the basics of using a particle effect in IntelliJ IDEA in libgdx. Now we're going to look at my nemesis, Eclipse. Hopefully nothing is going to go wrong. Eclipse is very, very similar. Um, it should just work. This is a fresh workspace, so there's nothing to corrupt. Let's go in here. All you do, in theory, is go in, import your project. Uh, it's a existing file. Locate it. It's in my... Don't ask me why. I do stuff out of my downloads folder, but I do. Come in and select them. I'm not going to copy them in. That way we get the changes between the two IDEs and finish and 
Okay, I don't see any errors, which is nice. In theory, this should just work. Oh, there's an error, of course. Uh, let's see what it is. Yeah, let's see if there's a quick fix. There is no quick fix. All right, what is it telling me to do? Oracle Android Jet Gem. Da -da -da -da. You know what? Let's go with the easy one. I don't care about Android today. I don't care about we're dealing with Eclipse problems. It's gone. Don't worry. It's still in the assets folder of the Android folder. I didn't get rid of the actual file system, so it's there. I'm just not going to deal with Android problems because I hate Eclipse. All right. So here's our project. I should, in theory, be able to come in here and run it as a Java application. Uh, let's go find our um, desktop launcher. Okay. There you go. Now, the key thing is, while you're in there, do the run as again, Java application. If you want to run the particle editor, instead of going into the dependencies like you did in IntelliJ, you actually just go through from the workspace, find your class like so, and click OK, and run it that way. So getting to your particle editor, you can either load it into either project and then run it, or there's one other option, and it's ugly. Uh, basically, you can run things from the command line. Um, it's uh, basically you just you go to the main page. The actual Java command for running uh, the jar from the command line is available there. The catch is going to be since now we've moved to a complete Gradle-based setup, locating these things. Um, used to be you downloaded libgdx, you extract it to a file, and your jar files were right there doesn't work that anymore. Now it's a Gradle dependency and finding the damn thing is not fun. Your easiest bet is to load it into, uh, actually here I'll actually show you where they're stored. On Windows anyways, on, on uh, a Mac or Linux obviously it's going to be under your, your profile location, but uh, in Windows it's under user uh, Gradle and then it's cached I believe, where did it go? Is it in one of these? Uh, I got no idea where it is now. Fortunately, there's a very easy way to find it. Go back to your IDE. I will go with... Oh, I shut down IntelliJ. I will load it up anyways. I'll load up IntelliJ. You can do this in Eclipse too, but once again, I, I hate Eclipse. All right. So in IntelliJ, for example, you come in. You can go to your dependencies. So let's say we are looking for the libgdx library, or I guess in this case we are looking for the tools library. You can come in, you can right click it, and you can show it in your explorer. And as you can see here, it is located under .gradle caches modules to files 2.1 com dot badlogic games dot gdx, gdx tools 1.4, and then a GUID. So <laughs> these things are not as easily located as it used to be. Um, side effect of using Gradle. Again, I think 99.9% .9 of us are in the world of IDEs now, um, so it's a lot easier just to run it from inside your IDE, uh, but that's where it's located. So, nutshell, you load up your project, you make the tools dependency set, you load it into your IDE of choice, you fire up the particle editor, using the particle editor you create your particle system, you save the particle system to your assets folder, you then create a particle effect, load in that system, start the, start the effect, in the update phase you update it so that the positions are updated, you then draw it, and you're done. And this will, in a like, 15 minute overview, that is the basics of particles in libgdx. Uh, in future parts, we will cover something a little bit more advanced and probably get into 3D, uh, but this is the basics of getting you going. Hopefully that helped. Thanks a lot. Bye.